So welcome everybody to this latest video on 162 Maths and in this video we'll be going over the AQA GCSE Maths of 2022 Advanced Information on the Higher Paper 2 with the focus of the number section just going over what each of the topics are and what it is you actually need to revise. Now I'll also include some lesson links to each of the topics in the description below so if you have absolutely no idea what is involved in each of the topics you can definitely watch a video that hopefully explains it to you. So what you can see on the screen is basically the list of topics in the number section for higher paper two. And in this video, what we're going to do is we're going to go through each individual topic that you can see and generally talk about what's involved in each topic and also have a brief estimate or guess as to what type of question could come up in your paper. So looking at prime numbers and cube numbers. Now with regards to prime numbers, one thing that you need to be able to know is know the correct definition of a prime number. Now the correct definition of a prime number is a number that only has two unique factors. So one being itself and the other being one. So it's really important that you don't just say that a prime number is a number that's got uh, can only be divided by one in itself because by that definition what could one could be interpreted as being a prime number which it clearly isn't. You also need to remember that 2 is the smallest prime number and also the only even prime number. All the other prime numbers are odd. Now, if you want to find out whether a number is prime, you can use the fact feature on your calculator. Now, if you've got a Casio calculator, let's say you want to check to see if 1, 2, 3 is a prime number. So if I enter the number and press equals and then press shift. Now, if you've got a Casio calculator, you should have like a fact feature, which can be found as a shift function just above the button that's next to the negative button. And if I press that, now if it comes up with the product of a prime or a calculation involving a multiplication, that basically says that the number is not prime. So therefore, 123, although it may seem like a prime number, actually isn't. So if I then typed in, let's say 11, which I know is prime, and press shift and fact the fact that that number doesn't change means it's a prime number so again if I went crazy and just went for uh, this number which is 178,563 I want to check if that's a prime number so press shift and fact no it isn't because obviously a product of its, it can be written as a product of its primes Moving on to cube numbers, again, you need to be able to know how to, now in terms of remembering your cube numbers, I would say that's not really essential as this is a calculated paper. But one thing you do need to be able to know is know how to enter cube numbers and also how to check for cube numbers as well. And you can do that by using the cube root. So for this, if let's say you want to check if a number is a cube number. So for example, let's say we want to check if 64 is a cube number, which we, you should know that it is. So here, if I press shift and the square root button then the cube root option comes in and then I press 64. Now, if when I press equals, it gives me a whole number answer. That means then the number is a cube number. So for example, press equals gives me four. So for uh, 64 is a cube number. If I typed in, let's say the cube root of 56, press equals gives me a decimal number. So that means that 56 is not a cube number. And likewise, if I wanted to work out what 23 cubed was, if I press 23, now some calculators have their a unique cube number, a cube button. I always tend to recommend my students to use universal just so that if you do have a multiple power number, you just use the same feature. So if I press 23 cubed, press equals, and I can write down the answer. Moving on to reciprocals. Now, reciprocals are basically one over and the inverse function of a product. So here it's really important that you know how to find the reciprocal of both the whole number, a negative number and a fraction. So for example, if I wanted to work out, so let's just make up a question, find the reciprocal of let's say four, B let's go for minus six and C let's go for five over seven. So here I've got mixture. Let's go for D. Let's go for a negative fraction. Let's go for minus 8 over 15. And let's go for 2 and a half. So here I've got a collection of different numbers I've got. So for A, in terms of the answers, reciprocal of 4 is going to be 1 over 4. The reciprocal of a negative number is just minus 1 over whatever integer is written. So it's going to be minus 1 sixth. Now with fractions, when you're doing the reciprocals, all you've got to do is just simply flip it. So this therefore then 
if the refraction is 5 over 7, the reciprocal of 1 over 5 over 7 is therefore going to be 7 over 5. With D, with a negative, well, it's still going to be a minus. So that's going to be minus 1 over 8 fifteenths. So then that's just going to be minus 15 over 8. And then for E, with mixed numbers, again, what you might want to do is write it as an improper fraction. So that's going to be 2 times 2, which is 4, plus 1 is 5. So 2 and a half equals 5 over 2. And then it's going to be 1 over 5 over 2, which is 2 over 5. And there we are done. There are links with reciprocals which are to other topics on this revision list for paper two, one of them being negative indices and perpendicular lines. Now, also what you need to be able to know is know that multiplying a reciprocal by a number is the same as dividing by the number. So what I mean by that is let's say I want to do five divided by two. Now, let's say for argument's sake that the division button doesn't work. So what I could do is I could do five times, but then I'm going to do the reciprocal of this number, which is a half. So both of them would give me an answer of 2.5. And likewise, you can work the reverse. So the reciprocal of a number is kind of like the opposite of, or basically the same as dividing. The next topic we move on to is decimal places. Now, in terms of what you have to revise with regards to decimal places, I would say you need to understand and know place value and also know how to write place value as fractions. So what I mean by that is if I had the number of 2.12345, and let's say this one represents a tenth, and that represents 1 over 10 as a fraction. The 2 represents a hundredth. So then that's going to be written as 2 over 100. The 3 represents a thousandth. I can spell it. And so that's going to be 3 over 1000 as a fraction. The 4 represents a ten thousandth. So that's going to be 4 over and then 10,000. And the 5 represents a hundred thousandth. And which is going to be 5 over 1, 2, 3, 4. And that's 10, so that's 100. And so also you need to be able to know how to round decimal places. And again, if your rounding's not great, I'll include a video in the description below that goes through the whole of topic of rounding with decimal places. And also there's going to be links to bounds as well. That's also going to involve decimal numbers, which again, bounds is mentioned, uh, I think, next. And here we go. Nice little segue. So here, moving on to bounds. Now, one thing with regards to bounds, and again, if you're not too sure about this topic or I'm not making any sense, then I strongly recommend you watch the video which goes through the whole entire topic of bounds. Now, with this, you need to be able to know how to find the upper and lower bound of a rounded number, and that's with decimal places, significant figures, and numbers to the nearest 10, 100 uh, units, 1,000, 10,000, etc. From this, you also need to know how to write error intervals. Now, the error interval is basically the lower bound, which it can equal to. Then you've got the number, and then you've got the upper bound. Now, note that the inequality just before you write the inner bound number doesn't have an equal sign. So that's how you write your error interval. The next thing you need to then know is know how to get the maximum minimum values of calculations. So for example, if you wanted when you're adding then and you've got a plus b, then to get the maximum, the minimum number, you want uh, the big, the smallest a and the smallest b. And for the max, you want the biggest a for two G's, let's go for one. So you want the biggest A and the biggest B. Now, when you are subtracting, and you're doing A minus B to get the biggest number or to get the minimum, the smallest number, you want the smallest A and the biggest B. To get the maximum number, you want the biggest A and the smallest B. When you're multiplying, that's going to be the same as uh, same as adding. And when you are dividing or well, here, what you want to get the minimum value, you want the smallest 
A and the biggest B. And to get the maximum number, you want the biggest A and a small B. And they, that's how you can get your bounds in terms of the upper and lower bounds in terms of calculations. Moving on to fractions and particular products. So the word product basically means multiply. So this, this particular information that they've given you is basically knowing how to multiply fractions together. Now for this, you also need to know how to multiply fractions that are written in mixed number form. Also know how to convert mixed numbers into and from improper fractions and know how to correctly work with mixed numbers on your calculator. So if I get the calculator back now, if you're not, you should probably already know this, but let's say you want to work with mixed numbers. Now to get fractions, I would strongly recommend students to always use your fraction button. So for improper and proper fractions, use that button. But if you want to work with mixed numbers, if you press shift and that button, you then have the three boxes to allow you to enter your mixed numbers. So I could write two and let's go for three fifths like so. Now, if I wanted to convert a mixed number into an improper fraction, all I need to do is enter the mixed number press equals and it automatically converts it into an improper fraction for me. If I want to write it as a decimal, I press the SD button and jobs are good. In. Let's say I want to go in the opposite direction. So let's say I want to convert 14 over five into a mixed number. Now for this, if I press shift and the SD button, it then converts it into a mixed number. And again, working with that, I can just press shift and SD and it just switches between improper and mixed numbers as well. And again, with it being on a calculator paper, this question should be relatively uh, easy, but also not contain that many marks because they kind of will be expecting you to use your calculator to get your answer. And that leads us on to our last topic, which is indice negative indices. So for this, you need to know that a negative power means the reciprocal of the base and its power integer. And also that this particular topic is links to reciprocal, which we previously mentioned, but also perpendicular lines in the geometry and measures section. You also need to know how to use the laws of indices and use these with negative powered indices. Now, remember that there are seven uh, or eight laws, depending on how you split it or how you've been taught it, that you need to be aware of. And that includes powers of zero, powers of one, brackets, fractional powers, etc. Now, again, just a brief little insight to what these are. So for example, if I add three to the power of minus five, then that minus basically means one over three to the power of five. If I had three to the power of minus a over b, then again, all that means is one over three to the power of a over b in fractional powers. Although it's not, I would probably say should have been mentioned if you're going to be using it. But again, it's important general knowledge you should be using, you should understand what fractional power is. And again, if you're not sure, I'll include the lesson link in the description below, along with all the other topics that are in this section of the higher paper two.